Recently we decided to spend a night camping on Ben Acker East, which overlooks Glencoe and looks directly across onto the Bucolet of Moor. The reason we wanted to do that was to shoot some sunrise and the sunset from the previous evening. But as you can see by the video on the screen just now, this is about 4.30am in the morning and although the clouds were very dramatic, there was no sunrise to be had at all. The previous night for sunset though, there was nothing too grand in terms of a sunset but there was some nice light that came in and I was very lucky enough to be able to catch that. And so this video is going to be looking at the edit of one of those shots. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so what this is going to be, is this going, this is really going to be my process for this image. And I'll keep it quite short as well, but I'll go through the entire process and just show you my thoughts and considerations in it. So as you can see just now, I am starting in Lightroom. Couple of tweaks to be made here, and then from here I'll go into Lumen REI and then come back into Lightroom for the, to finish the process. So one of the first things I am going to do is I'm going to lift the shadows just ever so slightly and everything within this edit is going to be subtle. Once we get into Lumen REI, it's been a really clear day anyways, as you can see when I shot this, everything's just going to pop with that. Dehaze I'm not going to touch, if anything I could take it down that way slightly but I'm not going to touch it because I like the light here and I didn't bracket this because of the effect of the light, that's what I wanted to capture in the image. So I am going to pull the dehaze back slightly, just to about minus three and that will just add subtle amounts to that. The vibrance and the saturation, the saturation as you can see, yes it will be adjusted but that will be left to the end. This For this I'm just going to show you my kind of rough process for this. Now you'll notice it's only a few edits in here. That's because most of the processing for this is covered in Lumen REI. Next thing I am going to do is go into calibration. Now this is one that I use a lot in my images, especially with the green. So if I go too far with this, that happens. And in this instance here as well, because of the light that's here, it makes that go a really, really bad colour. So, again, subtle. I'm just going to push it slightly, because I can cover the rest of that in Luminar. Uh, I could go into my brushes and paint it in there, but I'm not going to do that. So. That's me, that's as far as I'm going to take this for now. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to edit in Luminar AI. So this will boot up Luminar AI and I'll show you the rest of the process. Okay, that's us in Luminar AI now. And now I have a template that I normally use for most of my images. And the template here is one I've created myself and it's named Clean and Crisp. And this is the effect it has. Straight away, that gives me everything that I need to use to edit my images. Not all images use it and as you notice here, what it's actually done is it's brought out more of the detail in the clouds, which I don't want. Now I could, using Luminar AI, go in and just mask all that out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the edit down a bit, just in case you're starting out using Luminar AI just to see how it actually works. So what I'm going to do is reset adjustments and I'm going to go into edit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the accent. Now I've got a normal order that I use for this. Each time I'm doing this I'm looking globally but I'm looking at certain elements in the image in case I want to push things a little bit further or pull things back, knowing that I can go in and mask it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it to there just now, and that's, that's quite subtle. If I show you the before and after, you can see the difference. And that's when I said earlier there that that will deal with the greens for me. I know it would have done that just because I'm using it quite a bit. Next thing I'm going to jump into is structure, and I'm going to push the structure but I don't want the structure to affect everything. I only want it to affect the buckle and the surrounding land, but only within certain areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the mask 
and I'm on, only going to paint it into certain areas and as usual with the videos I'm going to be quite liberal with this I took my time with the original edit but I'm going to be quite liberal with this I'm going to take the brush size up and I'm just going to paint it into certain areas just down here over here and you'll notice I haven't touched the sky yet down here and I'm not going to go into that area there because we have that glow from the sun but what I am going to do is I'm going to take the opacity down and I'm going to find my edge and I'm just going to paint into it subtly so that the blend from the light remains within there Mr Part of the Buckle so I'm going to take the opacity back up as I say I'm doing this quite liberally but it's just to give you an idea now all this can be done in Photoshop or any other software that you use to edit it can all be completed in Lightroom as well but I wanted to because I hadn't done a Luminary AI uh, video in a wee while I wanted to edit this one within Luminary AI so this is one of the processes I use next thing I'm going to do is go into details and I'm going to push the small details Again, it will emphasise the buckle, but it emphasises everything down here as well, and I don't want it to. So, I could go back up into Structure, go into the Mask, into the three dots, Copy. And what that's done is copied the mask. And now if I go into Details, and I've got the small details just pushed slightly, probably over pushed there just to around there, medium details, I'm going to take them right down just to let you see the difference so that's why I go subtle, I don't push the clarity or the details to do it too much I don't like that in my images so I then go into my brush and I go into the three dots again and I go paste and so what that's done, if I go in here and go show mask it's applied it to the same areas that I applied the Structure AI to. So I'm going to turn off Show Mask. So there we go. So, so far we have went from that to that. Now it is subtle, but you can see the difference. The image has really popped. On the buckle, it's probably popped too much, but at least you get the idea for this. It probably has popped just a little too much there so what I can do is I can get back into structure just turn that off I can get back into structure and with structure I can pull it back a tiny bit again going for subtlety now that's better and I'm going to enhance AI and I'm going to pull that back slightly again that's better for me that's a lot better for me so that's as so far we've covered enhance AI, structure AI, details landscape within the landscape I've got the dehaze remember I mentioned the dehaze earlier so if I use dehaze it ruins that light that I have so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into the golden hour slider and I'm going to emphasise the tones of it slightly and again subtlety not too much if I show you the before and after, I'll just turn that on and off. There's a slight difference here and that's what I'm looking for in my images. If I push it too much, you'll see the difference. But I'm only looking for a slight difference here. And it's really just to enhance the scene. I'm not pushing this and making it unrealistic. It's really just to enhance the scene that was already there. From here, I can go down into super contrast and play with the highlights, the mid-tones and the shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the highlights and again gently edit these. Very, very subtly. One or two. To be honest I'll flick that on and off. And the main area I'm looking at is up here. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. Mid-tones contrast. Now see what happens there for me that brings out too much detail in the distance and I don't really want that so what I'm going to do again subtly bring that in so we can see straight away if I close that if I get into the shadows first I'll just show you what happens with the shadows it lifts the entire image 
but again that wasn't what I was after with this image so I'm going to keep it quite moody there I'm not going to play with the balance of these I'm going to leave the balance at zero for them because if I start to go in it changes the smaller areas in there again too much for me so I'm going to turn super contrast off and I'm going to show you the before and the after so you can see the difference that that's made already to that image last but not least with this image before it goes back into Lightroom what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the colour and if I go up here and go into colour and this is where I'm going to play with the vibrance, the saturation and perhaps the luminance of this so right now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the saturation and one of the things that I normally do is I pull back the blues and it just helps overall with the image in my opinion but in this instance I'm actually going to push the saturation slightly with the blue because that will affect the greens as well and for the next thing that I'm going to do hopefully you'll see why I'm going to get into the yellows right if I pull the yellows back it draws back all the greens so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them slightly and that way we can see different areas popping if I turn that on and off hopefully you see the subtle difference and I am looking mainly at these areas here and hopefully you'll see the subtle difference with that and that's enough for me because that's nearly what we saw when we were there the greens as well I can pull back again it's affecting too much for the resulting image that I want so I'm going to leave the greens there if I go in and remove colour cast it takes out the warmth again that I added earlier so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull the saturation back slightly and push the vibrance and what that will do is it will make these pop even further now it's not unrealistic here it is a little more vibrant than what it was but it's not unrealistic and to be honest it's in this case it's my image it's what I want for the final image and if you're doing the same it's what you want for the final image so I'm going to go a bit there about 10 scroll back down I'm going to get into the colour harmony and I am going to play with the warmth again now I know that the warmth will affect the entire image as you can see I take it down there and push it up there again subtly I'm going to leave it at that two's, two's quite happy for that I'm quite happy with two at that should I say split colour warmth I'm not going to get in and play with that just now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look at the image overall and then I am going to go in to light so as it's sitting just now I'm quite happy with it I'm quite happy with the edit as well am I going to push the temperature if I push the temperature again that begins to happen and that's too detrimental in here and I don't want that so I'm going to leave the temperature at zero highlights if I bring them back it's detrimental Shadows, if I lift them, it allows you to see more of the image. So, or should I say, it allows you to see more that's going on and helps bring out some of the details in there. Basically, it is just lifting the shadows, but it helps to lift the contrast within that as well. So I'm going to go around there for this. Quite happy with that. I, I'm then going to play with the smart contrast. Because this will dial everything back in for me that to me is way too much so as you can guess very very subtly so I'm going to go about there so that for me most of those sliders are acting globally but you have seen that I've painted in certain areas but that for me I'm quite happy with for this edit and for this video so I'm going to click apply and go back into Lightroom Okay, that's us now back in Lightroom and there's a couple adjustments that are still to make and I'll go through these with you and then we will be done with this image. So, the next thing I'm going to do, after adding all that warmth, I'm going to bring it back just a tiny bit. Just to around there. 
I am then, I don't have to adjust any of these because I'm happy where the image is sitting just now. I've got plenty of clarity there. I can see all the details in here. Everything's looking good. As I said at the beginning, intentionally blew out the sky, which is the main thing. Uh, as in, I didn't bracket for it because I wanted that light. I wanted to capture that break of light that was coming on there. Uh, so you can see everything within that. For me just now, I'm not going to adjust any of these sliders. I'm going to jump straight into colour. So now that we're in the colour, what I am going to do is I am going to jump into the greens and I'm going to shift the greens yet again. Uh, so I'm going to push the greens over that way slightly. And it is it is slightly for me because what I'm doing is I'm watching what's happening here again. So as a global edit, I only want that small area. Let's go into the blues and play around with the sky. Remembering that each time I move the greens, the sky becomes affected as well. So I can do that. And we can go too far and it just looks terrible. So I can push the saturation bring the saturation back. I actually quite like it and it's something that I don't normally do with the saturation on and further in because I feel that it helps and works well with this. So what I would do now is I would go in and dodge and burn the areas that I wanted to emphasise even further and make more contrasty and what I'll do is I'll show you the actual final image from the original edit of this but it's the same process as involved except for the dodge and burn and a couple of tweaks with the colour as well.